join me in prayer. There is one life and one divine expression from which all life springs, and that life is perfect. That life belongs to everybody in this room. It belongs to everyone who is hearing this message for today. And as we look at community, today, Reverend Jen will deliver words of inspiration on the ode to joy. Joy and gratitude both have causative power in our lives and in our affairs. We are grateful for everyone who's come together, for our musicians, for our sound technician, practitioners, our hospitality team, everyone who's come together in this space today to make this expression of divine possible. And so as we move forward into this service, I know that everything that takes place is perfect. I release my word into divine law, knowing that it is already done in the divine mind at the intersection of right here and right now. And together we affirm, and so it is. A few words of inspiration on joy today. The first is from Michael Singer. God's nature is eternal conscious bliss. No matter what you've done, you're not going to be the one thing that ruins it. The beauty is that you can experience the ecstasy. And when you begin to feel this joy, that's when you'll know God's nature. Then nobody will upset or disappoint you. Nothing will create a problem. From Bill Wilson, the joy of living we really have under pressure and difficulty. And from our founder, the Honorable Dr. Ernest Holmes, the man who's always glad will surround himself with people who are happy and life will be a continual enjoyment. This robs no one. It does not make a race of irresponsible people. It makes a world of joy, a world that is good to live in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this season of joy, joy in our hearts. And I know uh, whether you're in the room today or you're watching this online, that some of you are going, yeah, right. Hasn't felt like that, maybe. Hasn't felt like that, particularly in each of our individual worlds, because so much is going on, and, and we're, it's like we're saying goodbye to loved ones and friends uh, way too regularly, and that creates a whole lot of different response from us at this time when everybody's talking about joy. And so how can we live in that space of loss, live in that space of challenge, of conflict, of confusion, and still be able to experience and express joy? Because I'm here to tell you that it is very possible to do this. Our emotions uh, offer us an opportunity to kind of dance through life, tapping into this one for a few minutes and then tapping into this one and then tapping into this one. And some of them we consider to be positive emotions, some of them we consider to be negative emotions, but we can still do the dance. And so today I want to talk about some of the things that we can do, that we can support ourselves in, especially now in this short, short time frame between now and when Christmas shows up and we want to embrace some of that joy. Maybe it's joy from childhood. Maybe it's joy from years past. Maybe it's the joy you're evidencing in someone else. Um, and we just want to—we want to have a little bit of that for ourselves. And so we're going to look at how we can do that. One of the first things uh, that we want to consider is that sometimes we need to give ourselves permission. We need to give ourselves permission to have that experience, to have that expression. And what happens to us, especially in times when we're dealing with loss, when we're dealing with that heartbreak, we don't think we're supposed to be happy. 
We think that if, if we show evidence of happiness, that people will think that we didn't really love the person that we've lost or that there's something out of whack with us or whatever that is. And so what I want to encourage you to think about this week as we go into this week is to give yourself permission to simply feel, to simply be, to simply experience and express whatever is coming up for you, you individually. So our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, uh, gives us this quote, everything necessary to the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. So in addition to giving yourself permission, speaking this beautiful affirmation throughout the week is absolutely going to support you because this is saying that I have everything I need to be joyful. Boundless joy. I love that terminology, boundless joy. And it's all here and it's mine right now. And yes, I may be shedding some tears. And yes, I may be feeling some grief. And yes, I may be dealing with, with a, a, a challenge or a problem that I'm not sure how to overcome. And yes, I can still experience and express this boundless joy. So the first step we want to look at throughout this, as we go through this week is let's get to know one another better. I think that's a really great, especially since our, you know, we're looking at this idea of community and how is joy showing up in the community and how can I experience and express more joy. Uh, we want to look at that whole piece. And I think if we take a little more time to get to know one another at a deeper level, we can really feel that kind of joy. We enter into most situations, most conversations. In fact, we don't even open an email without already having a preconceived idea of what's coming for us. And we have an expectation when we meet someone that they're going to talk a certain way, they're going to act a certain way, they're going to behave a certain way. Let me just tell you something. If you ever hang out with me and, and Karen Karsh together, you're going to have to let go of all those expectations immediately because we don't behave that way, yeah. especially when we're in the room together. And, and, just, and just think about that. Are you setting yourself up for failure in some type of connection or communication because you already have an idea? You've already prejudged the situation, if you will. So what we want to do is we want to move past what we want to see, and we want to move into what we can see. So when I'm talking about getting to know each other better, let's go a little bit deeper. Yeah, we can talk about the weather. You bet. We can talk about the weather, especially in Colorado, because, you know, Colorado, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> but is that helping us deepen our conversations and deepen our communications? Not necessarily. Asking someone's opinion about something and then being present to hear what that opinion is and not arguing and not thinking of what we're going to say next and just letting it be, just letting it be. How beautiful would that be? I know for me that when I meet people and when I see people, we are a uh, emotional being and we are visual. So we see someone and we kind of make a decision about who they are, how they are, before we ever start to talk to them. And, and if you start to behave in a way that doesn't fit my story of you, I'm either going to argue in my head about why you did or said what you did to try to get you back into my story, or I'm going to just be in that place of shock. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how this happened. I don't know why this person's behaving this way. And, and the truth is, again, if we could just hold that space, that energy of being in that, that role of observing and listening and being open, that can take us to a better, deeper connection than anything else. This week, I believe we are being called to see things more clearly to see one another as we truly are and stop trying to put one another into a mold if we've been doing that and just be able to embrace each other in that space of community so that we can tap into that idea of boundless joy. I have a quote here from Black Elk, who was a Sioux holy man. He tells us this. I was seeing in a sacred manner the shapes of all things in spirit and the shape of all things as they must live together like one being. And I saw the sacred hoop of my people was one of many people 
of many hoops, excuse me, of many hoops that made one circle wide as daylight and starlight. And in the center grew one mighty flowering tree to shelter all the children of one mother and one father. So in this, in this message from Black Elk, what I love about this is the, the circle of people in community, that never beginning and never ending circle, and how these hoops intertwine, these circles intertwine, and then they circle more and more and more, and they surround one another. And that when you think about it, just the energy of what that brings forth in that dynamic of being in a circle. And so, as we take time to get to know each other at a deeper level, we discover that we have a broader sense of humanity's capacity for spirit. We become more understanding. We become more compassionate because we can actually see the hearts of one another. We can feel what's on someone else's heart. You know, there are over 300 ethnic religions in the world. 300. These include the indigenous faith tra traditions. But think about that, 300. That means there are 300 variations of a philosophy or a starting place for conversations, if you want. 300 variations. We're going to be so busy this week. Um, how beautiful is that? And, and this takes us to places that we never imagined. You know, I mentioned in my talk last week that there was a time when, when I prayed for a teacher to come, a teacher to come and, and interact with me, to interface in my life and teach me something I'd never heard of before. And that person showed up, and every time he spoke, every word that came out of his mouth was something I had never even considered. The power and the energy and the vibration that we understand is everywhere is also in stones and crystals and gems. And that was something that he was really big about, and I had, I had no idea. I had never considered it. I, it was something I didn't know anything about. So as we look at this and we talk to these individuals and we talk about their faith, maybe and just instead of f flying out the door and saying Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to people, we say, so are you celebrating something this month? What does that look like for you? What a deepening will that bring to our connection? So we are encouraged to share our education and the education of others. We're encouraged to seek more understanding and insight. And we can bring this richer human tapestry to life in our lives and really embrace all of the variety, all of the diversity. In this activity alone, there is joy. There is joy in this. The second step I want to consider this week is um, embrace our differences. So now we're in this conversation. We're talking about having this communication and this connection. And we're having this conversation. And we're moving into a deepening experience. And, and we're going to discover that this person doesn't think like I do. And this person doesn't talk like I do. And this person doesn't have a history like I do or a belief system like I do. And oh my gosh, how about if I just embrace that? I just allow it to be. I don't have to discuss it. I don't have to argue with it. I don't have to try to convince them of something else. I can just be that witness in, in the presence of them and allow them to speak their truth and who they are. Randy Woodley gives us this quote. Life is a sacred circle. When we gather in a circle, the praying has already begun. When we gather in a circle, we communicate with each other and with great mystery, even without a word being spoken. Hmm. So here I was just telling you about having conversation, and now I'm going to tell you to be quiet. <laughs> Think about this. When someone is in the throes of a deep grief, there is no word that can be said that will ease their pain. Nothing can be said. And sometimes even our presence doesn't quite do for, do for them what we'd like it to do, but, it, but it's, it's a reminder. It's, it's that presence that sometimes helps us to see. And sometimes just reaching out and taking someone's hand and holding their hand 
and being present is adequate, is enough, and to be in the silence. And so let's look at that this week as well, as how often do we just take a breath? How often do we pause? How often do we just step back and allow the conversation to continue or the interaction to continue? Jim Lockhart is the uh, author of the book, Creating the Beloved. And I have this quote from him to share. It says, safe space in spiritual community is not about eliminating discomfort. It is providing a supportive place where we can experience the inevitable discomfort of deep personal introspection and spiritual growth with support and understanding. Hmm. Safe space is not about eliminating discomfort. So here we are in this beautiful sanctuary where we do our best each week to create a safe space where everyone can come and feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I know we've never said it to you that way before, but it's the truth. And isn't it okay to be a little uncomfortable if we know we're safe, if we know we're loved, if we know we're accepted? It's that whole piece about um, leaving the panic outside of us and, and, and just allowing ourselves to be calm in this moment, in this space, in this place. I, uh, I took the inner child journey that was offered at Mile High Church. I'm not even sure if we've still got it going on over there, but years ago, years ago, I was only in this philosophy, I don't know, maybe two years. So I was pretty green. I didn't know what I was doing, and I heard about this inner child journey. Sounded great, sounded exciting. I went. A couple, 300 people in this room, you know, and I'm, th and I'm blown away because being in a class of that magnitude, and they broke us up in small groups, and any of you who've been through the inner child journey, there's all these wonderful little things you get to do to tap into your childhood. And, at one, and I was doing great. I was, I was rocking and rolling. And at one point in time, we were asked to demonstrate a challenge from our childhood that had a religious base to it. Now, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian philosophy where you were right or you were wrong, and that was it. That was it. No discussion, no gray areas. And I thought at this point in time when I'm at this class, this workshop, that, you know, I pretty much have my, my stuff together. I, I've let go of all that stuff that, that traumatized me, and some of it did. Until I stood up in my small group in front of six people and I began to act out something that I remembered. And I grew up in a, in, a, in a church where when you did something wrong, you had an opportunity on Sunday to get out of the debacle you were in by coming forth in front of the entire congregation, confessing to the minister, and seeking prayer. And there was a time in my life when I was, I had I'd made a few choices. <laughs> and they weren't the best choices, and I was dealing with uh, the aftermath, and I remember being in that church building with 300 people sitting in front of me and stepping out into the aisle and starting to walk down that aisle to the minister and knowing, knowing, because I just knew I was being judged by every single person who watched me walk down that aisle. Now, fast forward, and I'm in the inner child journey, and I'm doing this process for these people that are holding me in a safe space. They're not judging me at all. There wasn't judgment on anyone's face, in anyone's eyes. I was free to do what I needed to, and I did exactly that. I had a meltdown, and I began to cry uncontrollably, and I literally dropped to my knees in the center of that little circle of people, and I, I, I was, you know, we've had those hiccuping sobs, you know, that type of stuff, and I was so shocked that there was so much pain still alive in me, still embedded in me. And what we had been told before the program began is that if we got to that point and we needed a break, we could, there was a space we could go to outside the room and we could go sit and someone would come and reach out to us or talk to us about possibly, you know, having prayer support or whatever. And so I did. And I don't recall ever feeling um, challenged by the people in the room 
I don't recall thinking that anybody was watching me walk out the door. It was nothing like years before when I'd walked down that aisle in the church building. Nothing like that. And so I went out there, and uh, a minister came and met with me and asked me if I would like any more support. And it was a very kind, beautiful process, and I took advantage of that. And I felt incredibly safe, even though I was in the midst of an emotional turmoil that I wasn't sure where it was going to take me. And it was such an incredible feeling to know that I was safe and protected in this space, even though I felt incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable in trying to find my way. So what I want us all to think about is, where are the places that we feel safe? Maybe we don't always feel comfortable Maybe we're not always in our comfort zone. Maybe we're being prompted to growth and, and change and a different mindset, if you will. But we still feel safe. And that's that space where community exists. And that's that space where we want to seek. And that's that space where we can go and feel that incredible, boundless joy. And so then the third step this week is to seek the safety and support where you can express yourself authentically. Who can you talk to? Where can you share? When you're upset, when, you, when something didn't go your way, when you, don't, when, this, when you don't care for this particular opinion and you just need to talk it through, do you have that safe space? Let's seek this out this week. This is one of the reasons we have our practitioners, our licensed practitioners, because they are trained to offer you that love to offer you that support, to offer you that place of safety and comfort, knowing that that conversation will not go anywhere outside of you and the practitioner. And then to know that whatever you have to say will be taken into prayer in a positive manner to lift you up and to bring you forward. <coughs> Underneath the religious traditions, there is a shared humanity. This is a quote from Joseph Mudd. So regardless of our differences of opinion, regardless of how we choose to worship or what we choose to believe about a higher power or um, an inner being, an inner power within us, be beyond and beside all of that, underneath all of that, underneath every bit of that is our shared humanity, our ability to be human, our ability to be real, our ability to be authentic with one another. So this week, the encouragement I have for you is to take the time to get, one an, to, get to know one another at a deeper level. And, and here's what I mean by that, just to reiterate what I've already said. When you step into that place of getting to know someone at a deeper level, I want you to start looking into their heart. I want us to connect heart to heart. What happens when you connect heart to heart is a lot of the disgruntledness, the conflict, the confusion, the arguments, whatever they are, go away. When you read an email from someone and you immediately get hurt, upset, disgruntled, Take a moment and breathe into the space and remember the person who wrote the email and what you know about them and what's alive in their heart. When we have a conversation directly and we're talking and one of us says something that the other one's like, uh, takes that moment, it's like, I don't know what happened here, but um, that just uh, caused me to, to be a little upset with you. Take that deep breath, that moment of silence, and allow that situation to... Um, allow that situation to kind of pass. Don't think about what you have to say back. Don't jump right in there and, 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 and demand that, that your feelings were, were, were hurt or overlooked in that moment. But to breathe into that space and remember that heart connection that we have with each other and how I know that you love me. And if I know that you love me, then I know that what you've said to me that I'm, I'm now offended by isn't something you really intended to say. It's that simple. 
And then through that place, we can go into that world of, of, of communication and, and opening up and, and connecting and resolving whatever differences there may be. Embrace the differences of the people around you. As we walk the path in this world this week, let us look at all of the many ways that we show up and all the differences about us and let us embrace that and consider that, you know what, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> which I have that with uh, my, my niece and nephew, because they're, they, they do a lot of stuff called um, Dungeons and Dragons and all kinds of stuff. And so they're always using this language and they post stuff on Facebook and I'm like, that's really cute, I think it's funny, I'm not sure, but I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's okay, I don't, I don't always need to know. I don't need to know. What I, what I get to know is that I love them, they're precious in my life, and I love to see the expressions of what they're doing and how they're doing it. And then lastly, as I spoke a few minutes ago, seek safety, seek that place of safety. See, seek that place where you can be connected to that person that can hold you in that place of safety. I wanna talk about one of my favorite people before I close this talk today. And his name was, his name is Matty Stepanek. Uh, Matty Stepanek, many of you have heard of him. He was a brilliant being who began writing poetry at the age of three years old. He just would speak these beautiful, incredible phrases, and his mother started writing them down. Matty was born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy, along with three other siblings. So this little boy came into this life and lost three siblings in a very short time frame. So not only was he living with a debilitating disease that was going to take his life at some point in time, he was living with incredible grief, and he got to see the world through the eyes of his mother, a single parent who was supporting him in any way that she could. And yet, this amazing being found joy, found incredible joy in everything he did every idea that he had. Maddie was considered a poet, a peacemaker, and a philosopher. He was an author and a motivational speaker, and he made his transition from planet Earth at the age of 13 years old. A brilliant light on this planet, and yet even he was a small star. Mm -hmm. He was just a little star in the midst of so many stars, but his light shone so brightly. The things that he had to say, the things that he had to share were taken to heart by others. So I share this quote for you, with you from, from him. When I grow up, I think maybe I will be a snowman because when it snows outside, I'll already be cold and like it. <laughs> and children will play with me and laugh and sing and dance around me. And those are important things to have happen when you grow up. Our theme this week is Ode to Joy. That's about a poem that lives within each and every one of us, a poetic song that lives within our hearts. Maddie wrote this beautiful book of poetry called Heart Song. This week, may you find your ode to joy. May you find your heart song. May you sing it from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed at night. May you blast it out to the universe, expressing the joy of who you are and how you are. May you also shine your light brightly for the world to see, even though you may consider yourself a small star. May you also show brilliance and boundless joy to the world. Please join me in prayer. What I know right here and right now is I know that there is a presence it lives within us, it lives surrounding us, it is a higher power, it is this intelligence within us, it is this inspiration of who we are and how we are, it is 
all pervasive. It is in all things. I call it God. I call it spirit. I call it divine intelligence. And what I know right here and right now is that each one of us is alive with this being, this spirit, this presence within us because it is a part of our very DNA. It is who we are. We are of source and it is source. And so knowing this, I know that we can go through this week choosing joy. Choosing joy from that place of faith where we know that it's going to work out, that whatever's going on, this too shall pass, and I have the right and the privilege to choose and tap in to that boundless joy because spirit has told me so. Mm, how beautiful that is. How good that feels to know who we are and how we are. And so this week, as we take this joy out into the world and we connect with others, may we connect with them in, in that place of respect and love and connection and acceptance and show our joy to the world. And as we do that, we show our love, that deep-seated love that is within each and every one of us. Because truly, that's what the season is about. Whatever we call the holiday, whatever we call the the ritual, whatever we, however we identify it, it is all about that awakening to the idea of the love and the joy that we are. And so I know all of us are blessed by God. I know this planet is blessed in so many ways, and this week we seek to find the good, the positive, the blessed, and the perfect. And we let all of the rest of it go, turning it over to God, turning it over to spirit. And so I just release these words knowing they are already heard in the mind of the divine. It's perfect. We're blessed. All is well and all is good. And we just let this go and let it be as we say together. And so it is. You don't have to feel brave to be brave. I don't have to feel strong to be strong. We don't have to be inspiring to inspire. Just remember when you're wrong is rough and long even a small star shines in the darkness with someone somewhere to see sees the world just the way you do. Remember that each of us is made uniquely, but no one seems to see their own magnitude. Even a small Don't you be afraid to be just a little brave. 
shines in the darkness. For someone somewhere to see. Hello, I'm Reverend Jen Wild, Senior Minister for New Dawn Center for Spiritual Living. New Dawn Center is a global community and we welcome all people, all paths, all ways of thinking, all philosophies. So know that you are welcome here and thank you for joining our online community.